Hey guys, welcome to Electronics. I'm Gregory. Today you're gonna design and test this little circuit here. This circuit can limit the width of a pulse in between a minimum and a maximum value. This is a little circuit, a very clever design, and you're gonna see how it works and test it on the bench. Let's go! This is the circuit you're gonna design today working properly. So guys, I made here an input pulse generator so we can change the pulse width of the input and see the output of the circuit. So here, the top trace is the input of the circuit and the bottom trace is the output of the circuit. You can see that when we change the input width, let's see, let's try to reduce the input width. Here we have the output with the same width but if the input is less than the minimum value, the output will have a constant minimum width. So here we can see that the input is not changing the output because the input have a smaller width than the minimum allowed value. If the input goes to the capture range here, here in the capture range, the output will follow the input. And if the input goes above the maximum value, the output width will be limited to the maximum value. Very interesting. Capture, capture range here, minimum limit and maximum limit. Beautiful circuit. Let's see on the whiteboard how this works. So guys, we saw the circuit working on the bench and now let's try to understand how it works and try to see the design approach I use it to design the circuit here. In this design, we have two circuits working in parallel. So we have a monos table that generates a maximum width output pulse, and we have a pulse generator that's triggered by the input edge of the, of the pulse. And this circuit generates the minimum pulse allowed. So the output pulse always will be higher than this pulse here generated by this pulse generator and will be always less than the pulse generated by the monos table here on the top. The monos table pulse generator is sensible to the level of the input signal and the output pulse is generated by this differentiator RC circuit network here that works in a very interesting way. We can see that when the input pulse goes high the output of this inverter will go low. When this node goes low, so it's grounded, we connect the capacitor to the ground. In this manner here, this node here will go instantaneously to ground level here. Because for AC signals, for the edge of the signal, this capacitor here is a short. So this node goes to low and the output goes to high because here we have another inverter, a Smith triggered inverter. As the C current cannot pass through this capacitor here, the capacitor will be slowly charged by this resistor here and this node will grow to a higher level slowly, as you can see here in this waveform. When the voltage of this node goes above the threshold of this Smith trigger, the output goes to low again and you have a constant width pulse on the output. This pulse width here is approximated by 0.8 RC. This is a really coarse approximation. If the input width is less than the pulse that would be generated by the RC network, so let's imagine that here we have a shorter pulse that is less in width of the pulse generator by this uh, derivative network here, the output will go down before and it will have the same width. So in this circuit here, the output width is equal to the input until a maximum limit is reached. When the input width goes above the RC constant, the output will be limited to the RC constant. With this top circuit, you can limit the max width of the output. So now we need to limit the minimum pulse width. And for this, we can generate a constant pulse width here using an edge trigger circuit. With an edge trigger circuit, the circuit will always be sensitive to the input edge of the pulse. So 
the input width doesn't matter. So let's think that we have a very short pulse here on the input. We have the edge and this edge will trigger this flip-flop that will register a 1 on the output because the data is connected to high. So when we have a rising edge, the output goes to 1 and we have the rising edge of the output. But now on this circuit here, we have an RC low pass that will delay the output of the circuit. So after an amount of time, the amount that is proportional, that is the width that we need here on the minimum uh, uh, limiting value, after this amount of time, this gate here will see the one. But now this one will be inverted to a zero and this zero here will reset, will clear this flip-flop and the output will go to low. So the circuit here on the bottom will always generate a constant width pulse in the output, independent of the input width. This inverter here is also a Smith trigger inverter and it's very clever because the input of this inverter will see the, the output of the circuit delayed because we have the RC constant here and this node cannot go too high instantaneously. So if this node here goes too high with the output, the capacitor will start to charge and the, this gate here will only see the high level after an amount of time. And this delayed amount of time here is the output width of the circuit. Now we can combine the two circuits to generate an output pulse that's limited to a maximum and to a minimum value. And this can be done by using an OR gate here on the output. We can place here on the output an OR gate that is connected to the two circuits. And we can connect the inputs together. Now let's imagine that we have a very short pulse on the input. If you have a very short pulse on the input, the top circuit will generate a very short pulse because this circuit limits the maximum value, but the bottom circuit will generate a constant width pulse. So the output will be the minimum allowed value to the width of the, the pulse. If now the pulse has a long duration, this circuit here will generate the same pulse and this circuit on the top now will limit the width to the maximum value. And in the output we have the limited pulse. If the width of the input pulse is between the maximum and minimum value, this will be the same width, but this here will be the same as the input because we are not above the maximum. And here we have a pulse that has the same width of the input. In a practical circuit, it's important to add a diode here this diode is needed because when the pulse goes too high here, this node will be above the VCC and the input of this gate here can be damaged. And it's very interesting to add a diode here to reset the RC when the pulse goes down. We can make an optimization here because here we are using a flip-flop, the inverter gates and an R gate, but we can use an AND gate. An end, an end gate with Smith trigger. This is 74HC132. And remember that an end gate with inverted inputs is equal to an R gate. Using this trick here, we can reduce the number of components because now we can invert the bottom input of the NAND using the invert output of the flip-flop. So we can use this output here and we can invert this output here, removing this inverter here. As this NAND gate here has Smith trigger inputs, we can remove this inverter here by an NAND with the two inputs tied together and also here. And this was the circuit you saw on the bench. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video. 
And in the next week, we're gonna see how the deck that we designed using two PWM signals work and we're gonna try to measure and characterize this deck here. So, see you in the next week.